Hello everyone, my name is Tony Asher, and welcome to my analysis of Matt Kirkby's short film, The Phone Call. The Phone Call is a story of a socially awkward crisis hotline operator named Heather. Hello there, my name's Heather. And a very distraught caller named... Stanley. Stan soon reveals that he has taken a lethal dose of antidepressants on this second anniversary of his wife's death and refuses to let Heather call an ambulance. Instead, all he wants is a friend as he slips away. The phone call is a beautiful film about humanity. Heather, a seemingly overworked woman who feels that she is past her prime, is forced to question her own outlook on life after speaking with Stan. It takes Stan's journey towards death to make Heather realize that we only have a limited amount of time on this earth and it is up to us to decide what we do with it. That's nice. You know each other's names now. As the film moves forward, Heather and Stan quickly build a very strong friendship. To illustrate this increase in emotional connection, Kirkby sets Stan up shots with very little clutter that focus in on Heather's facial expressions and body language. Just take time, okay? The camera frames Heather from four main angles. This first shot is a beautiful frame of Heather from the side, with the sunlight from the window bouncing off her hair and sweater. The second is a straight-on shot, which slowly zooms in as the scene moves forward. It's been difficult for, for a long time, for two years. See? Zoom. The third is a shot of her hands anxiously playing with her watch after she learns that Stan has taken a massive dose of antidepressants. We can do that. No, it's not possible. Not without. As the shots progress, Heather becomes more and more distraught. Later on in the film, there is a final series of shots that reveal Stan's true impact on Heather, but I'll get onto that in due time. Speaking of time, clock imagery is also an integral part of Kirkby's film. He utilizes many different shots of clocks and also increases the volume of their ticking as time becomes more and more important. The clocks first appear after Heather asks Stan, Have you taken some pills, Stan? And he responds, uh, uh, uh. Yes, yes, I have. Over the next five minutes, Heather frantically looks back and forth between the clock and her stopwatch while trying to convince uh, Stan to call him. In the process, she learns a great deal about Stan and his deceased wife, Joan's beautiful relationship. We were devoted to, to each other. We just, we just looked after each other. I did and jobs around the house and, and did, the, did the roses. And then Heather learns about how Joan died. And she got breast cancer. She had all the treatments and chemo, horrible, horrible chemo. She suffered for three years. I keep thinking she's going to come home. Of course, she never does. She never does. She now fully understands why Stan is so distraught and decides to ask him if she can call an ambulance one more time. Stan, I feel I know so much about you. I feel like, I feel like you're my friend. But I'm a bit distressed about all those pills you've taken. Can you call an ambulance, please? No, please. Stan, it finally becomes apparent that Stanley will hang up if no, Heather calls an ambulance. Stanley, so she lets go. Can't you just... Stay and talk to me. Like, are you allowed to do that? Can you just stay there and, and talk and hold my hand? And, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Of course I can, Stanley. Initially, I thought that Heather's hand closing down on her watch and the scene that follows only meant surrender. That there was no going back and that Stan's time was up. I soon found that I was not thinking deeply enough. It may be true that the passage of time no longer matters for Stan, but this particular sequence is also a major turning point for Heather. As Stan fades, Heather begins to realize that her time on Earth is limited, and that she had better make good use of it. Oh, it's on his play, you know, Ronnie Scott's song. Yeah, well, we played Ronnie Scott's. Really? Yeah, quite a few times. What? That's amazing, isn't it? Uh, you do that. Well, I still love it. They used to go all the time. I've been there in ages. Why not? 
I don't know, I don't, don't really go anymore, I'm too old. So Kirkby does something really brilliant here. His camera becomes a pendulum swinging underneath Heather's nose. The shot itself becomes a giant clock, ever ticking away. This technique is twofold. Along with Kirkby's genius clock metaphor, the camera angle also exposes the raw emotion that Heather is feeling by coming up from underneath. Here's the shot again, this time sped up so you can really see the motion of the camera. Eventually Stan, who finally reveals that his real name is John, stops responding and peacefully slips away. Heather, profoundly affected by her experience with Stan, decides to take some initiative and begins to turn her life back around. So in the span of 20 minutes, Kirkby has managed to start and end the most powerful friendship in Heather's life, one that makes her realize that time is all we have. This is Tony Asher from Machine Room Productions signing off. Thanks for watching. Taking away the moment.